Right, well I'm here to give you an overview of some of the work I've been doing on Gary and his family's uh, family history. Uh, Gary commissioned me to do some research on his mum and dad's family trees in memory of Alan and Dot, which I think is a lovely idea. It's a real family legacy that we can continue over the years and hand down to the next generations. So we've got two completely separate families because we've got the Gray family who of course married the Metcalf family. And I've done a separate video all about the Gray family uh, with the Gray family tree, so you can look at that if you want. And this video is going to concentrate on Dot's family tree, um, which is the Metcalf branch. Um, but if you think of family trees in surnames, that's usually the easiest way to, to think of it. And all the ladies, I always refer to them by their maiden names just to avoid confusion. So we've got um, a scroll for Dot and her family. And then we've got um, just a mini tree, which is a simplified version, and some family history books where I've stored all the records that I've found for the Metcalfs and all the stories and some of the interesting things that we've discovered are all stored in the Metcalf family history book. And for anybody on the side branches, such as the Ramsey family who married into the Metcalfs, they're stored in the second book. So yeah, I'll show you those in more detail later. So now I'm just going to um, unroll Dot's tree and pin it up on the board. If you were at home, you could just put this on your dining room table or uh, just unroll it a little bit at a time. But here I'm going to pin it up because I think it looks better um, to go through on the video. Or if you're having a family gathering, it's nice to just pin them up on the wall or you can borrow one of my display boards if you like. And um, what I've done is I've wrapped around um, Dot's tree um, a really brilliant family letter because this is what I've based the tree on. I've put some notes on the family tree about the memories of Edith Ivy Metcalf, Auntie Ivy, who brilliantly in 1972 wrote down um, some wonderful memories that she had about the family. And that's what I've used, you'll see, on the tree. It's slightly different to the Gray family tree. So, um, because Auntie Ivy was talking through so many different branches, I had to diversify and go off onto other branches. So, I'll explain when I've pinned it up. is um, a different background. I've been practicing with my software. I've done all kids for Dot um, and um, I've done it in slightly different style. So as I say this encompasses all of Dot's different branches and I needed to do that to be able to cover the story um, that Ivy talked about in her letter. So um, What I'd like to do is start here and talk about Dot and um, because she married um, Alan Gray, all their children are actually on the Gray family tree and um, if we wanted to do a family chart like the Gray family chart with all the Metcalf siblings then I'd have to do a different style so that's further work. Um, but there is a list in your family history book of all the Metcalf descendants so we have all of these, all of Joyce's and Christine's family are on the list and I can produce it, I've written here, I can produce it on a, an A1 roll if you like. Okay, so let's talk about Dot here. So Dot's got three more babies due on her branch uh, this year, um, but they won't have the Metcalf name because obviously it stops at Dot and then becomes Grey. So um, we can keep adding to Dot's branch when the babies are born in two, uh, later on this year, March and May. Um, now Dot's dad here, um, 
John Alfred Metcalf. It's his sister, Ivy, Auntie Ivy, I'm going to call her Auntie Ivy, who wrote the letter in 1972. So here she is. So Ivy is um, Dot's auntie, um, the sister of Dot's dad. Another interesting sister is Lily, who went to live in South Africa, which I think is really exciting in that day and age. It's quite exciting now, to be honest. And Gary remembers that she used to have an ostrich farm and sent um, ostrich eggs back to England. So I'm sure that was great for all the kids. On Alfred's branch, um, the, the, some more Metcalf sons. So the Metcalf name will continue. I think it's uh, Daniel David Metcalf who's the one likely to carry on the name there. So we go up a branch here, so we're now on Dot's granddad, Alfred Metcalf, and um, Ivy reminisces that he worked for the Midland Railway most of his life, and it does on the 1901 census say that he's a railway drayman. I'm wondering if he served in World War One as well, because married men were conscripted towards the end of the war, so he might have served in World War One. I. I don't know if anybody has any family records. And interestingly, Alfred's brother James, uh, married Alfred's wife's sister, so two Metcalf brothers married two Bar sisters. Talk about the Bar family in a minute. Yeah. So we'll go up a branch now to John Metcalf, and Ivy reminisces that John was a stonemason um, who apparently helped carve the figures on Bradford Town Hall. So. That, you know, that must have been a really great job to get and obviously uh, probably only the best stonemasons were employed to do that. And then we go up one further branch to Thomas Metcalf who was born in Askrig in Yorkshire. So down the tree we come, I think it's more or less Yorkshire all the way, yeah. We've got Askrig in Yorkshire and then Bradford right down the tree there. So you can find more about the other branches in your family history book. So we've got Skelmanthorpe here, which is quite interesting, the branch at Skelmanthorpe. Right, so we're coming back round now to the Bar branch. So just to recap, um, Dorothy's grandma, Margaret, um, and then there's some reminiscence here from the letter. Um, apparently Margaret's sister married Walter Sharp, who belonged to a well-known musical family. I can't find much about them on the internet. but And um, their daughter Hilda married Sergeant Rushworth in the Bradford Police Force. Then Margaret had another sister, Elizabeth Hannah. She married Walton Siddle, um, who appears to be from the Worth Valley Hotel in Ingro. So, um, don't know if anybody knows much about that branch. And then, continuing up the bar line, To Joseph here. Um, now, Auntie Ivy says that Joseph and Elizabeth they met in Filey when he was working for his uncle, who, who had a shop in Scarborough, and they eloped apparently. Now, I can't find um, a marriage record for them, so I wonder if when they say eloped, they literally mean eloped and never actually got married. So I'm not sure about that. And John Barr. Uh, further up here, somebody's researching his tree on the internet and there's a few photographs of his siblings and things which I could look into further if anybody's interested. Um, so back down to Joseph here, his sister Betsy Barr apparently used to wait until everybody got sat down in church before she walked in because she specifically wanted them to hear her silk skirts rustling. It must have been quite a thing back in the day to have silk skirts and uh, everybody would know there was silk by the way they rustled, so that's quite funny there. So we're going back to Joseph's wife, Elizabeth Hannah Johnson, born in Hunmanby, lovely part of the country at the coast, near uh, Reeton and Bridlington. And her dad, tragically, it sounds awful, apparently he was out collecting rents, his rents from, I think he was a builder and he had a few houses, and he was attacked. And Auntie Ivy's letter says that um, he was going to tell everybody about it in the morning, but he died. Um, so we're not really sure what happened there. There's probably something in the local newspaper that could be investigated. He died in 1850, so we're talking a long, long way back there. 
and his wife, Margaret Mary, sorry, Mary Margaret Mosley, apparently ran away from boarding school. Um, and then bizarrely, later on in life, after her husband had died, she ended up taking a boarding school for girls in Filey, so. Um, and Elizabeth's sister Margaret sounds interesting. She married a tea merchant and lived in Low Moor. Um, they didn't have any children of their own, so they adopted a niece. So that's quite a nice family story there. Right, so completely different side of the family now. So we're on to Dot's grandma. No, we're not. We're on to Dot's mum, Ada. Ada's maiden name is Ramsey, and Ada's sister, Phyllis, um, was the mum of Peter Ramsey, which I think the family is still in touch with Peter, uh, and it's his branch of the family that are carrying on the family name. So we've got Ada here, um, and the Ramsey family are very interesting indeed. We're wondering if they're actually descended from the Ramses of Dalhousie Castle in Edinburgh. That's what some of the family stories say, but I can't actually find a link as yet. But um, lots of searches on Google bring up lots of information. Just flicking through my notes to make sure I haven't missed anything, Phil. Um, so let's talk about George William Coxon Ramsay. So this is Dot's granddad. A uh, really interesting chap, actually. When we were researching him, I felt really sad for him because um, it would appear that he went to Australia with his dad but came back and got married in Durham. Now, um, when I found him on the 1911 census, he was in hospital and his children were staying with his brother. His wife had died. She'd actually died in childbirth, giving birth to Phyllis. So he's in hospital, the children are with his brother, and then six years later, in 1917, he died. So Gary asked me to send off the death certificates, and um, it's absolutely awful. It says um, that he died of a spine fracture and exhaustion. I mean, he was only 44, I'm wondering if he had a mining accident because he was a miner but how awful so then the kids um, were left with no parents now then he had a brother Lancelot Ramsey who stayed in Australia so when the family went out there Lancelot stayed George came back and tragically you'll see all about it in your family history book I've put the newspaper articles Lancelot got into an argument in, in, um, in a restaurant in Australia and there was a fight and he was stabbed in the leg and uh, he died so poor Lancelot died um, in Australia he wasn't married so I'm not sure what other branches if any of the Ramses there are in Australia they'd be interested to look into but how amazing poor Lancelot it's all on the internet if you want to google it and I've printed out some things for your book so going back up the tree, here we are, to Thomas Dunlop Ramsey. When his wife died, he married again and decided to emigrate. Now, he was a colliery manager in Durham, so I suppose that was quite um, an opportunity to go and work abroad. And he went uh, with his family to Australia. He came back briefly and then went to South Africa where he died. So I'm wondering, there must be some Ramses in South Africa from that branch which would be really interesting to find. And then up another level, as far back as we've possibly got, is Thomas Smith Ramsey, born in 1813 in Northumberland. So I'm not sure, like I said, if there is a link to the Ramsey clan. It has to be further investigated there. So the Ramsey branch, really interesting. Really interesting. So back down here to Dot, uh, um, Grandma. <laughs> Eliza Annie Gray, no, Eliza Annie Ramsey, Nee Mason, uh, again Yorkshire, born, tragically died in childbirth um, with Phyllis, um, as I've said before. I think she'd had about eight children altogether, Phil, as well, hadn't she? So, uh, up to her dad here, Jonathan Mason, is that Bruff, I think, or Brow in Westmoreland? Um, so um, they, they seem to have stayed in Westmoreland and Durham. And up to his dad, George Mason, who was interesting. Let me just get my notes filled. 
Right, you'll see in your family history book that there's a record from 1800 um, about George Mason saying that he'd served 10 years in the 44th Regiment and that he was nearly blind age 30, so must have been a really difficult life for George. I don't know whether he sustained some injuries in the army or what, but um, you can have a look at the record, it's a bit difficult to read. Um, and then these branches are yet to be investigated. Enea, super name to research. Cornwall. So I think that's really interesting that um, there's a Cornwall connection. If Gary wants to fund a trip for me to go down to Cornwall, I'd be happy to look into the Enea family. <laughs> um, so, Phil, is that about what we have to say, I think? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So again, like I said on the other video about the Grey family tree, we can do another version with all the Metcalf descendants, but they are on a list in your book. Um, I can do copies for the family if they'd like a copy. We can do some more research about the higher up branches to see what we can find out about them. Um, and then moving over, Phil. So I printed oops, a copy of Ivy's letter. And then, because it's a bit difficult to read, I've typed it up. So I've typed it up with some notes about who she's referring to. So I'm going to wrap that round the tree so you can have a look at that. And I've also put a copy in the Metcalf book. So in the Metcalf book... Um, I've put all the records that we found. We sent off for a marriage certificate so we could find out details about the next generation. There's a probate record, Auntie Ivy's letter. What I do need to do is print out some of the census records and things, but I ran out of time to do uh, the full works, as you, if that's one way of putting it, um, on the Metcalf branch. So all that can be read and digested at your leisure. And we're presenting this to Gary and Alison tonight, taking it round to Gary. So do a little bit more video video with Gary, talking about his mum's branch. And that's it for now. Okay. Well, we start off at the bottom with your mum. We know about baby Margaret. You told me later on yeah. that there was a baby born and died that's right, yeah. in 1924. And I did find her on the records when you told me about ah, her. Right. So that is absolutely yeah. you're right, correct. Because the baby died, the tradition was to then name the next child with their name. Yeah. So we've said here she named her baby sister Margaret Metcalf, who was born and died in 1924. She was yeah. named after her. Yeah. And then this Margaret actually lived with her aunt Lily in South Africa That's for right. a while. Yeah, I remember. And then she returned and married Will yeah. Yeah. and the Living Shrewsbury. Yeah. So then we've got Joan. Then we've got yeah. your mum. The only boy, Alfred. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's his branch that will carry on the Metcalf name. Then we've got Joyce. Yeah. And that, because she's called Joyce, I've put her name in caps, so we know to call her Joyce, yeah. not Lily. And then we've got Christine, who emigrated yeah. and lives in Canada. Yeah. So she'll be hopefully watching this video. Right. Well, Christine, <laughs> and get to see a yeah. uh, um, in Canada. A sister probably. street. Oh, does yeah. she? All right. So that's the bottom branch of the Metcalfs, that's your mum's generation. Yeah. So we go up one here, and it's your mum's auntie, John Alfred Metcalf's sister, who wrote the letter in 1972, documenting some of the family history. So it's his sister, yeah. um, Ivy, and she mentioned all the people that we've got on the tree. She mentioned her, um, her sister Lily, who went to live in South Africa and had an ostrich farm, yeah. and she used to send eggs back to England. Yeah. And then she mentioned um, Alfred, so we're talking now about your mum's granddad, yeah. Alfred. Um, who worked for Midland Railway, Ivy says, most of his life, yeah. and that's correct. On the 1901 census, he's a railway drayman. Yeah. He might have served in World War One, actually. I don't know if anybody knows that, because it's the centenary of the start of World War One this year. Right. There's a lot of work going on about serving soldiers. It'd be interesting to know, because married men were conscripted towards the end of the war. Okay. Um, and he had a brother, James, now. This is like um, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Because two Metcalf brothers married two Bar sisters. Oh, right. mm. that. So we've found that out. Yeah. Then Ivy also tells us that her great granddad, or her granddad, your mum's great granddad, was yeah. a stonemason and he helped carve the figures on Bradford Town Hall. Mm. So that's the guy there. Right. 
um, born and bred in Bradford, got yeah. married at Bradford Cathedral and we know a little bit about his branch here which is all to be investigated. So moving back down here to Dot's Grandma Margaret. So where's, um, who is it, Ivy? Here. There. She's okay. Edith Ivy actually. So she is, there's Lily, John and Ivy. Right. There she is. She's here. Yeah. So she's your mum's oh, so the, so dad's the, sister. Yeah, so they're, yeah. they're, they're the ones at the side. Yeah, yeah, the ones at the they're side boxes. are boxes. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And this is yeah. a complication we were saying yeah. about. Yeah. To, you can't get an exact format for ev that covers everything. Yeah. Right. You've just mm. got to kind of get one of the standard ones and just make it look yeah. as good yeah. as you can. So we could mm. draw a box, actually, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, There fine. she is, anyway, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never married. Yeah, that's right. Um, so she's telling us about, Ivy's telling us about her mum, Margaret. Yeah. And she said that Margaret moved from Ragby to work in service in Bradford as there was no work for girls in the countryside. Right. So these are more or less direct quotes from Ivy's letter. Yeah. And she said my brother, um, she said a, a mum's brother, Willie, spent all his working life in Ragby at the same wood yard as, yeah. as a mum. And um, Ivy said that she passed some happy hours playing in the wood yard during her school holidays. Right. And they had another, Margaret had another sister, Eva Louisa, who married Roger Sh uh, Walter Sharp who belong to a well-known musical family. Oh, right. mm. And their daughter Hilda married Sergeant Rushworth in the Bradford Police Force. Very good. And that's her uh, other yes. sister Yes. So the other sister, yeah. Elizabeth Hanna, married Walton Siddle. Oh, right. um, now he died in 1916 and his probate says he was of the worst ballet hotel in Ingrove. He left £770, which is an awful lot of money mm. in 1916. Probably yeah. is, it, it really is. Uh, and their daughter Bertha never married, died age 41. Their other daughter Annie lived at Hall House, Shibden. Shibden, yeah. And the son James was an inspector of schools in London. Very good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Ivy's then telling us about your mum's great grandparents. Yeah. And Ivy says that Joseph and Elizabeth met in Filey, where he was working for his uncle John Barr in Scarborough, who kept a grocer's shop at the end of Hoxton Road and mm -hmm. delivered milk and groceries to Mrs. Johnson's school. So they eloped and they went back to live in Ragby and Joseph resumed his own trade as a carpenter. Mm -hmm. Now I think they really did elope because I can't find a marriage record. Yeah. I don't think they actually got married. Mm -hmm. and, and then this is a funny little story. She said that Joseph's sister Betsy apparently used to wait uh, in church till everyone was sat down then she'd walk in so that they could hear a silk skirt rustle. Very <laughs> 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 <Really> good. <sighs> And then um, Elizabeth's sister, Margaret, married William Wadsworth, and he was a tea merchant in Low Moor. Mm. So mm. Um, that's a bit unusual, isn't it, round here? Tea yeah. merchants. It's think, to be, you think that would be near yeah. the coast, wouldn't you, when they unloaded the, the yeah. ships? Now, this guy, poor fella, William Johnson, he was a builder and he died after being attacked whilst collecting his rent. Oh. Apparently he staggered home, if you read the letter, yeah. and said, I'll tell you about it in the morning, I've been attacked and died. Yeah, yeah right. I remember reading that. Yeah. yeah, so we don't know, there might be some reports in the local newspaper actually about that. And then Ivy tells us about um, Mary Margaret Mosey, who ran away from boarding school, and ironically, later on, after her husband died, she took a boarding school in Filey. So she ran away from school when she was a, a, a girl. Ah. Mm -hmm. So do we get... Oh, you, we won't get Ada on that, would we? No. No. Ada. Oh, yeah, Ada. Ada, 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 Ada Mary, Ada. Yeah. 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 So this is That's just the Met car. All oh, right, okay. okay. But, but, you, but yeah. you are going to get now, so that this line yeah. um, is, the, is the Metcalf and Bar sign. Yeah. But John Alfred Metcalf married. Yeah. And we move around. Yeah. Ada Mary Ramsey. Yeah. Right. So we've got all right, yeah, 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 yeah,
Now his poor wife, um, Eliza Ramey, died in childbirth with her eighth child, Phyllis, right. who is the mum of Peter Ramsey. Right. right. Yeah. So his wife died, left him with all the kids, and on the 1911 census he was in hospital. So I'm worrying for him, like, why is he in hospital? The kids are all with his brother. Yeah. He must have been awful in 1911 to be in hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, he must really worry, no welfare state. And then five years later, he died, so we sent off the death certificate. And it's awful. He said it died of a spine, spine fracture, fracture and exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Age 44. Mm -hmm. And I think he might have had a mining accident. It could well have been, couldn't it? It's not awful, poor fellow. Yeah. Yeah. So the kids were parentless. Okay. And whilst he was suffering, we don't know what happened to him, we'd have to do some further research. Yeah. His brother, Lancelot Ramsey, in Australia, he didn't come back, yeah. was stabbed in a fight with a Greek chef <laughs> right, in a restaurant in Cremola yeah. right. in Australia. And he, he died. He was stabbed in the leg and bled to death. He was only aged about, in 1925, he was only young, I think in his 20s, and he's actually mm. buried in Cronulla. So the model will sell his don't argue with don't the chef. Don't with a Greek chef. <laughs> Any chef, but as long as they're not Greek. Mm. So Paul Lancelot, so Cronulla's quite an unusual name yeah. in Australia. So I was researching him thinking, well, poor old Lancelot, I wonder if there's any sign of him. Yeah. Maybe a gravestone or something in Cronulla. Mm. And left it at that. Two days later, my friend Quentin and Denise, who were in Australia, put a photo up on Facebook. Right. Here we are in Cronulla. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> no way. I Quite light zone. Yeah, I went, do, yeah. do, do, honestly. Yeah. So, to cut a long story short, their auntie is on a mission to find oh, right. a lot around his gravestone. Because we know where he's buried. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be super if she finds she it. Can do, yeah. We'll yeah. get a photograph, a photograph yeah. of the yeah. grave. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit dubious if they'll even be one, though. If he's if a young lad, there's no family. Yeah. 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 Possibly yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. At least you can find out the actual plot. So he's called Coxon after his mum. That was often the common, you know, yeah. thread. People have the middle name of the mum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so she's Alice Coxon, um, but died, uh, just to recap, died, and the husband led it to Australia with his new wife. Yeah. Now, Thomas Dunlop Ramsey, interesting, Dunlop, mm -hmm. he was a colliery manager, so I think he'll have got a chance of work in Australia. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. off he went. You'll see I've got the actual ship's log. Oh, right. him and his family in your book mm -hmm. on the Tibernia to Australia yeah. uh, and then he was a shopkeeper in Balmain in Sydney uh, he came back briefly with his family but then he went back and he went to South Africa where he died right. so he's got quite exotic right. roots here well, in well, South well, Africa yeah. in them days yeah. and then ultimately as far back as I've been able to find is 1813 with Thomas Smith Ramsey but yeah. born in Northumberland yeah. we were hoping we might find a link to Dalhousie Castle Ah, right. Uh, with yeah, these yeah. yeah. But as far back as 1813, they're in Northumberland. Yeah. There may, still may be some truth to the story, but Somewhere. it's going to take a lot more digging uh, to find the link. Cause so it's can, certainly can I worry about Dunlop, say, yeah. when we related to Dunlop? Uh, yeah, I wonder if you are. <coughs> well, you never so know, do you? Yeah. I haven't had a chance to do much work on yeah. Jane, but you yeah. could be, because we'd go, come down her branch, wouldn't we, to find the place yes. of Jane Dunlop? Yeah. People. You would have thought, well, yeah, I don't know how long Dunlop's been going. Yeah, think, how yeah. long will it have been? Mm -hmm. I, I, did, have, I did have a quick look. Um, I think it was, I think it was late 1800s. Oh, was it? So we may find, so if you we came back down, back, you James Branch, you never yeah. know, but I think you'd have heard in the family if that were true, don't you? You would have thought mm. so, yeah. But Dunlop, in, is it possibly mm. an unusual it's name? It's really, it's really, yeah. yeah. Mm. That would be interesting, wouldn't yeah. it? See, it may well be that they didn't start off with tyres, it would have been other rubber yeah, yeah, products. It, it, you know, could I mean, obviously, you think when cars were invented yeah. and became popular, but I don't know, we'll have to yeah. look into it. Yeah. So here we had to order his uh, death certificate, which yeah. costs extra, obviously. Yeah. Um, I've put in your book the actual newspaper reports, but on the internet, actually, if right. you Google Lancelot Ramsey, you can see for oh yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. So I've printed those off and put them in your book. We need to do Good. some more research on Alex Cox. Yeah. So back to your grandma, Ada. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. she died in 1982, so you'll remember Ada. Yeah. 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 Ada yeah. Mary Ramsey. Um, do you remember Phyllis, then, her sister? Phyllis. Yeah, uh, was the mum of Pete. No, no, I oh, right. re didn't really see them. Right. right. No. Right. So that's the connection yeah. there. And uh, is Peter still with us? Yeah, we think he's pleased. Yeah. Oh, right. Cause well, he is, because right. he sent a Christmas card to my dad, and I can't get oh, into right. I don't know where he lives. We don't know where Because right. he might be interested to see yeah. this, and he could yeah. help us have some more information, yeah. couldn't he? Yeah. So Ada's mum, Eliza Annie Mason, Right. So she, um, Yorkshire born and bred, and yeah. she's the, the poor lady yeah, who died in childbirth, yeah. and I think Joyce told me that, 
a right. child's christening. Yeah. So that's right. substantiated. Okay. Um, because we ordered her death certificate yeah. just to make sure, and yes, so you'll see in your book, in your Mason book, yeah. that's where yeah. she's filed, that that's what she died of. So it must have been awful, must have in them days. Mm. So her branch goes up the Mason line. Yeah. Uh, is it Bruff or Brow in Westmoreland? Bruff. Bruff. Uh, Westmoreland, soon to be born and bred in yeah. Westmoreland there. Westmoreland here. And um, Eliza Annie Mason's mum is a lovely, unusual name. Look at that, Ania. Yeah. Yeah. Sapperton in Gloucestershire, but her dad's from Cornwall. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to Southern fund me to go down Southern to Cornwall <laughs> and do some research for you. <laughs> How great is that, though? Cornwall branch. Yeah. You've got some really interesting branches. So yeah. Far, that's yeah. Such a long way. I know, that's fantastic. They moved around mm -hmm. like they did. Yeah.